Hi everybody, Solomon, Tails again, carrying on from the last one. Solomon's in his room in Cambodia, Sulukville, overlooking the sea. He's got a bit of a girlfriend for a night, second night. She just turned up with her friend. So she's called me and her friend's called Oi. They've walked into his room, gone into the shower and they're showering. Solomon, me had said to Solomon, $20 special night. Now he's wondering, Ooh. oh dear, what? Okay, wasn't expecting that. They emerge from the, uh, and Solomon's just there in his boxer shorts. They emerge from the bathroom with a towel wrapped round each of them. Lucky for them, there's two towels, <laughs> or unlucky. Um, and what follows, I, as usual, I can't go into too many details, but let's just say that Solomon had been on the hedonistic holiday before, and this night was going to be on par with Eden Club in Bangkok and his Hua Hin holiday. Um, these two girls were incredible instructors of the aerobic style and he had a very energetic evening, night, nine out of ten. Amazing night, morning came, amazing morning. And then on waking up in, in the morning and everything else, sort of breakfast time-ish, me, this one girl, the first girl, said to Solomon, $20, 24 hours, two girls, um, would be very nice. They don't earn a lot of money and they'd like to stay with him for a day or two. He'd only pay for one night, so he obviously paid for a second night. Now he's going to have to pay for a couple more nights, but two girls, amazing, talented, pretty, friendly girls. This oi didn't speak any English. Luckily me did. And he's like, Whatever, let's, let's, he just had an incredible night and he's thinking, oh yes, I'm in paradise. So yeah, okay. He's gonna have to feed them both. Down they go. <laughs> this time the, the security guard has gone and it's the woman. She sort of sees him come down with two ladies and he, she's sort of a big smile. And he's like, mm, a bit embarrassed, but cafe next door, breakfast for three of them. It's only pennies, it's, it's literally maybe two bucks for all of them. And then he says to me, well, we want to go maybe further today, have a look at other beaches. And me, I know, great place, maybe 15 kilometer. It's okay. So, finish breakfast. Jump on the bike, three of them on the bike, no helmets. There's hardly any traffic, the roads aren't brilliant, but you just drive slow and it's uh, it's fine. She's right back 15 kilometers again towards Vietnam. A um, bit of a hill laying down to a beach. Another stunning beach again, but this place had two. Um, Restaurant, cafe, bars, wooden style again. Same coffee tables and plastic seats. And on the beach, there was a couple of people on this beach. A bit further along, she said there's a five-star hotel. Didn't realise there were five stars down here, but there apparently is. That a lot of Cambodian people come to. And they can walk along and get to this beach. Along the sort of cliff and hill. But they go down. And yeah. This time Simon had brought swimming gear. Food, drink, swimming, nice day, water seemed a bit clearer. They just chilled, three, four, five hours. 
a great time. Kept eating, the girls just kept eating and eating and eating as they do, um, non stop. And by sort of after lunch, um, after eating that lunch, get a bit sort of tired and want a bit of a siesta. And Solomon says, like, let's head back to the hotel and relax for a bit. And uh, he's thinking that come uh, seven again, six, seven o'clock, that the girls would go off to work. And uh, that would be it. No. Back on the bike, back to the hotel. Showers, aerobics, showers, sleep. Six, seven o'clock. Let's go get food together. And he's like, you're not working? No, we'll uh, just not worry for a day or two. And he's like, oh. Okay, out of the hotel, round the corner, up towards the bar where they work, and uh, sort of cafe restaurant, food. The girl's like, we're tired, we've got food. <clears throat> Let's go back to the hotel again. He's like, well, okay, well, that's going to save money. So they do, back to the hotel. An amazing, amazing night again. Um, in fact, getting better and better, people more relaxed. Uh, oh, I can't describe it. <laughs> the This went on also the next day and the next night. Three days, three nights, Solomon, me and Oi had most incredible time. They just clicked, they hit it off together. Everything was just wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Solomon would remember these three days and three nights for the rest of his life. Sadly, at the end of the third night, was it? Come round to the morning and someone was thinking, I'm starting to spend a bit too much money here. The idea of coming to Asia <coughs> for a year was to walk, uh, wander around, see a bit of Asia, possibly see if there's work. So he decides, that's it, he's heading off. He says to me and I, I'm sorry, but I've got to go. They're sad, they're happy. They're okay. He settles up. So it's $20 a day. Anyway, in the end, he just, he throws them the correct money and gives them another 20 bucks each or whatever tip uh, um, and some loose change. And he looked after them and he'd fed them for three days and drinks and he'd spent a few hundred bucks. They were happy over the moon, especially with the tip, really over the moon. And he said, that's it, I'm going to check out and I'm heading off. So they all said their goodbyes. He didn't even bother phone numbers, emails, nothing. Just like, nah. <laughs> Just remember it for what it was. And that's what he did. They all said their goodbyes, checked out, paid the hotel. On the bike, now he had the decision. What's he going to do? And he's thinking, I want to go back to Thailand. I can't be bothered to wander around Cambodia at the moment. I can see it's a great place and fun to be had for all. A lot of poverty though, more, much more than Thailand. But I'm going to go back to Phnom Penh on a different route, dump the bike, get my way back to the Thai border, get a new visa again and uh, head back to Pattaya. I've got some unfinished business with Kay, that girlfriend I had that sort of upset me and sort of broke my heart and I found out she had lots of boyfriends. I want to find out the story. I want to know what that's all about. I want to learn for the future what is going on. And maybe I'll catch up with Ning as well and Frozen. And it's right, okay. Gets the map out and looks and I think there's a number, road number three. So he's going along towards Vietnam and then up another road back to Phnom Penh. 
he knows it's going to be about five or six hours to get up there um, maybe touch more but he knows he can do it in a day it's early he's just going to go for it and that's what he does heads off at this road the road's quite good and he just keeps stopping all the way and about four-ish in the afternoon arrives in Pompen works the roads out gets back to Jeff's bar stops at the bar gets a drink and says to Jeff that's it he's done he's going to dump the bike back and he's going to head back to Patera he's not sure whether he wants to fly or cross country Jeff says to him there's a night bus um, leaves at about eight o'clock it's about six seven hundred kilometers to I think it's Popet it's called which is the Welcome Bridge Cambodian Thai border so there's a night bus only about 200 baht uh, three or four bucks uh, from just across the road from where he is now and that'll take him to the border and it gets into the border um, at about six in the morning or he could fly up to Bangkok and he thinks well the Cambodian border he can definitely get the visa there he wanted the tourist visa won't be a problem 30 days extend it for 30 in Thailand he says, well I'll just get the bus and I'll sleep on the bus instead of getting the hotel for the night so he said right I'll go and dump the bike come out and have a drink where do I get tickets and he just says just go to the bus stop and you buy it on the bus brilliant so he wanders takes the bike right, right, back round the corner to the lady pays her everything sorted she's happy comes back round a couple of drinks Jeff's bar and then wanders over to the bus stop sure enough bus turns up it's got air con reasonable seats not too many people queuing up but it's probably going to stop on the way and fill up so get on board and it's about five six dollars gets his ticket he's only got his rucksack goes to the back of the bus and he thinks I'm going to sleep I want to sleep all night push the rucksack in the corner gets right in the back corner of the bus the last stop is the border so they'll wake him up and he crashes and fast asleep doesn't remember anything about the trip <laughs> fast asleep been a long day and uh, yeah bus through the night he doesn't know how many times it stopped but come morning gets woken up the bus is only half full um, and they're close to the border it's about a kilometer wakes up and gets off the bus rucksack there he is not far from the border now he's got nothing planned on how to get from there to Patea but he'll work that out there's going to be minivans coming from Patea with foreigners doing the visa runs so he's going to try and tap onto one of them and get a seat plenty of time it's still early finds a restaurant cafe breakfast the usual <laughs> and he sits there and watches the world go by a lot of different types of taxis and tuk-tuks and song tells different types of vehicles like a motorbike with the back is a, a, a seat like a tuk-tuk but the front's a motorbike it's quite weird lots of those and you can see the casinos along the road all very smart big buildings Lots of shops selling junk and rubbish and counterfeit products and even copy cigarettes and things and he's like not interested. The time's ticking away. He's got to kill a bit of time because the border crossing, I believe it's eight o'clock it opens. He's got to sort out a visa. So he finishes up it's about that time, wanders up to the border. A lot of beggars trying to get money off him as he's walking along and annoying very annoying but never mind it's poverty gets up and the, the the sort of border buildings it's nothing special but he gets to the right one has to go up some steps goes in straightforward tourist visa 30 days um, gets his stamp whatever the cost is it's not a lot but he gets it stamped and he has to walk from the Cambodian side across the no man's land and the bridge 
to the tie side and then get a tie stamp. So does all that, walks across, stamp, stamp, yeah. And before he went on this trip, he got a bigger UK passport. He renewed his passport. It's one of the thicker ones with lots more pages. That's needed for all the stamps you keep getting for a year. Believe me, you don't want your passport to run out when you're over there and having to try and sort that out. But there he is, gets on the other side, and sure enough, he sort of walks towards the car park. And you can see minivans arriving, foreigners piling down to the border. And he goes and talks to a few of the van drivers, and he finds one going to Patea. There's only four guys on it, 200 baht. <laughs> um, sorted. Pays the guy the money. Four guys come back up. About 20 minutes later, he says hello to them. The Danish guys, if I remember rightly, and um, I don't know, four guys anyway. It's a minivan, and it's like a three, four hour journey. He falls asleep, and we'll leave it there. He's back, arriving in Patea. Where's he gonna go? What's he gonna do? I'll catch you on the next one. He had a good trip, didn't he? Me and Ag, oi. Oh, never forget that. Bye for now.